Ahead of the 2023 presidential election, political parties are making effort as Nigerians are yearning for a better government. On today's segment to discuss politics, joining me is Honorable Amadou Usman Jaha, a member representing the good people of Shibok, Dambor, Buza Federal Constituency of Boronu State. You're welcome to the program. Sir. Thank you so much. Oh, just for the sake of the viewers, um, kindly reintroduce yourself. Just to <laughs> yes, actually, I'm a Jaha Baba, is my name, and I represent the internally displaced an extremely victimized constituency of Chibok, Dambua, and Goza, including the remaining 94 not yet recovered Chibok girls. And I'm a member of National Assembly. All right, sir. Now, um, you are a member of the ruling or progressive party, the APC. Yes. And of the Ninth Assembly. Yes. Which is winding up. Yes. Now, looking back, can you tell Nigerians of your achievements and challenges so far? Yes, uh, as a party, we have succeeded in forming a government at the center with uh, not only reasonable but majority of the states across the country in 2015 election that met President Mahmoud Buhari, the president and commander-in-chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and other state governors. Immediately after that, the, after that, our government swimmed into action and started the process of governance. Our achievements are too numerous to mention. In the areas of security, as you are aware, before the emergence of this government, 22 out of 27 local governments in Borno where I come from, were under the occupation of Boko Haram completely. But as a result of the effort of our military men and other agents of coercion in the country, we were able to regain the 22 local governments that were hit at all under the occupation of Boko Haram, especially the various local government headquarters of these local governments before before the Arab because before the arrival or before the departure of this government in the process of governance there were 22 out of 27 local governments that were completely under the occupation of Boko Haram but today to God be the glory headquarters of these local governments and other satellite towns were recovered or reclaimed back to Nigeria from Boko Haram territory. In the areas of infrastructure, I don't have to mention it because you know it, you are a journalist. You know how we met it in 2015 and you know what we have today, particularly in areas of railing, railways, in areas of airports, in areas of bridges and other related infrastructure, which you are in a better position to tell the whole world or to tell Nigerians on this. Yes, any question? Okay, sir. okay now ahead of the 2023 presidential dispensation, yes. what are your political ambitions? My political ambition as a person is to renew my ticket, which I did in the last primary election. And I'm now trying to renew my mandate from the people of Chibok, Dambua, and Goza in the general election that is coming up in the next uh, maybe 100 days, if I can put it that way. People of Chibok, Dambua, and Goza have their option to choose among the candidates vying for the same position. We have some candidates from opposition PDP. We have candidate from NNPP. We equally have candidate from Labour Party and other small political parties. I'm a candidate for All Progressive Congress, APC, which has been representing the constituency 
for almost a decade now. And by the grace of God, I am optimistic that definitely I will make it back to the house to represent my people for another good four years by the grace of God. Of course, we wish you well, sir. Now, away Thank from you your so constituency, much. let's mm. talk um, about the national politics. Yes. Uh, the vice presidential candidate of the APC, um, Senator Kashim Shetima, yes. is from your state yes. and your party. Yes. Right now, he's facing a lot of lash out due yes. to the water of the Muslim Muslim, Muslim, Muslim ticket. ticket yes. And of course, rumor has it to the connection of, um, connection of the insecurity in Burundi state. Yes. What do you think is your fate with him on this? Uh, I knew Kashim Shatima almost two decades ago. And we worked closely with him when he was appointed as a commissioner in the state. By then, I was a member of a state assembly. I participated in the screening committee that screened him to become a commissioner by then. Then later on, he contested for election and won under the platform of ANPP. All Nigerian People's Party. And by the time he became a governor, I equally met it to the State Assembly for the second time. So we worked together with him when he was a commissioner for four years, and we equally worked together when he was a governor for four years. And to cap it all, in 2015, I contested election to come to National Assembly. I couldn't make it. And he met it the second time as a governor. He appointed me as commissioner for higher education and allowed me to oversight the Ministry of Sports Affairs. What I'm trying to say in a nutshell, I was holding two ministries under distinguished Senator Kashim Shatima. All the tragedy of Boko Haram from 2009 dead. I am not only in the picture, but I am more or less a participant observer. Because when Boko Haram struck in 2009, I was a member of his state assembly. From that very Sunday, I was in my degree. I witnessed what happened and I kept on monitoring as a public servant, a representative of Goza, which was declared by Boko Haram as caliphate till death, to be precise, about 13 years now. I have to tell you the truth that men out there may not want to hear. Senator Kashmi Shatima has never, has never, and I repeat it, never, partake in whatever situation to support Boko Haram. That I can confirm to you. Because I worked with him closely. This guy came from banking sector and entered politics. In other words, I know his political life from day one to death. I know when he was appointed commissioner for education. I know when he was later appointed for, sorry, commissioner for finance, later on to commissioner for education, later on commissioner for agriculture, later on commissioner for health services, and including commissioner for local government and chieftaincy affairs. And I knew when he became the governor. We served for four years with him as a governor. And I equally served him as a member of state executive council. So I know him. When the Chibok tragedy happened, he was the governor. I was a member of a state assembly. The whole world could not believe that insurgents like Boko Haram can come down in a single night and kidnap more than 200 kids or students, female students for that matter. When this thing happened, we were all alive. But federal government of then 
could not believe Kashim Shatima, could not believe the whole world that these children were taken. In fact, according to some people, the president felt it obligatory to call the governor for a brief after two weeks when the students were abducted. This is to tell you there was some level of misunderstanding or complacency from the part of the federal government. Had it been we reacted immediately, there is no way they can disappear. Because even on that day, when they took them, some of them escaped. So had it been we are proactive in nature, we would have prevent them having them, so maybe prevent having them in captivity up to death for almost how many years today? Since 2014. Almost eight years in captivity. We are still waiting for the return of 94 out of the 200 and something that were abducted. On, on the issue of Muslim Muslim ticket, we want people to understand why APC opted for a Muslim Muslim ticket. Asiwajibola okay. Metinimbu is the most experienced politicians and politician among all the presidential candidates. And is the only politician in Nigeria among the presidential candidates of the various political parties that assisted people from different zones of this country to become something, ranging from presidency, ministership, governorship, to mention but a few. This guy emerged a candidate in a Christian-dominated zone. Whether you like it or not, take it or leave it, Christians constitute majority in the South. Without fear of any contradiction. Then in the North, Muslims constitute majority. Coincidentally, or accidentally, whatever case you call it, Asiwaju Bola Metinibu emerged to be a candidate. From where? From the southern part of this country, and he is a Muslim. He contested election with majority Christian opponents. And he won. And by the time you compare the percentage of votes he got in the primary election, if you combine votes, they are not going to equalize him. All the votes of the other candidates ranging from Chubuke Amechi, uh, His Excellency, the Vice President, Yemi Osibajo, Ahmed Lawan, uh, Koji State Governor, and any other person that participated in that election, if you combine their vote, it's not up to Asiwaji's vote in the primary election. This is to tell you that Asiwaju is aware that majority of people that voted for him they want him to be a president. There is no way he can take a Christian Roni map from the northern uh, majority Muslims. This is in his own political wisdom. And any rightful thinking person that is interested in the success of not only APC but Asiwaju in particular will elogize him, will understand that he has taken that particular decision because of the situation he found himself. Secondly, we had an agreement in 2015 that there is going to be a power shift between South and the North. Because this is exactly what defines Nigeria. 
Nigeria was amalgamated between the Southern Protectorate and the Northern Protectorate. As far as we are concerned, this is the beginning of Nigeria's division. That Buhari can go for eight years. After Buhari, regardless of who is going to be the flag bearer of our party, should come from the South. That was why Northerners rally round, ranging from ministers, ranging from state governors, and major stakeholders in various states of the Federation, especially from the North, insisted that we must keep to that particular agreement. There was no agreement that the person that is going to emerge must be a Muslim or must be a Christian. No. Anybody is free to exercise his voting right. Nobody can disenfranchise anybody. If you know how to play your card, you want election, we are going to rally around. Had it been, okay, let me put it this way. Had it been known is Professor Yemi Osibajo or Chibuki Amechi that won the primary election. There is no way he can take a Christian Roni met from the north. There is no way he will find a majority in the north and pick his Roni met so that he can get majority vote here, he can equally get majority vote there. But the situation, this guy, Bolatinimbu, found himself. He had no other option other than to resort to Muslim, Muslim ticket. And another thing, we are all in this hall now. I am a Muslim. It's not written on my face. You may be a Christian. It's not written on your face. And the two stuff you came with, it's not written on their face that they are either Christian or Muslims. The most important thing is how much do you have to contribute to the development of the nation? It's not how many gods do you believe in. No. It's not how many times do you go to mocks. No. The most important thing is how are you going to deliver? You and I know better than anybody. The resume of all the presidential candidates is in public domain. Go and take one after the other. Be rational. Be neutral in your analysis. Analyze each and every one of them. At the end of the day, you will end up nominating, confirming, or selecting Bola Ametinubu being the best. Okay, sir. Let's look at it this way. Now, the your opposition, which is the People Democratic Party, mm -hmm. Bayera, yes, Atiku Abubakar, yes, um, is from same region and seems to be a big force this point in time. Yes. So, what do you think are the chances for your your, your candidates, the APC? Atiku is not greater than Northern Nigeria. Atiku is not greater than the unity of this country. But if um, the Muslim Muslim ticket seems to affect your party, don't you think? Um, as far as we are concerned, we are going to win election. But if in the event, it turns out, because it's the God that gave power, if in the event it turns out to be negative, we'll be grateful to accept that, and our names will be written in gold whenever the history of this country is going to be written because we kept to our promise. Unlike PDP, that go contrary to their agreement. We kept to our promise, we kept to our agreement. In PDP, there was an agreement that there is going to be power shift to the South. That was even why national chairman of PDP was selected from the North. You and I know better than anybody. There was no election. They only sat down and agreed that H.A. Ayu should come from the North so that presidential candidate can come from the South. Just like what we did. Our agreement was our uh, national chairman should come from the north, which we gave Abdullah Adam. He was a sitting senator, a ranking governor, a ranking senator, an elder statesman. But we asked him to resign his position in the Senate to become national chairman because we have an agreement to fulfill. It. We have a commitment to stick to. That is moving 
presidency to the south. I hope you got what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So PDP could not keep to their promise. Nigerians are watching them. Nigerians are watching them. We are men of integrity. We are men of honor. There is no way we can sit down and agree with anybody, even if that particular person is a pagan. You know, there is a serious difference between a pagan and a believer. Fortunately, in Nigeria, most of us are believers. But even if we had an agreement with a pagan, somebody that is not a believer, we can keep to that because he's a human being and he deserves to be treated like one. So we have an agreement. We're not doing it blindly. We have an agreement that there is going to be power shift. So for Atiku to contest election, as far as I'm concerned, it's not morally right. Okay. Because if you can sit down with your elder statement and take decision, the expectation of you as an individual is to stick to that particular decision. Or if in the alternative you are on exile, maybe to another political party, the members of the political party that you left reach an agreement. If you come back, what is expected of you is to comply with the agreement to reach while you are on exile. I hope you got what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You have to comply while you are on exile. If I were PDP, had it been we know, people can come back and contest election contrary to our agreement would have put a clause that this time around no Nodana will be allowed to contest during our primary election. Let them be part of their agreement, will be part of their constitution. So that if a Saudana finishes his own or her own eight years, uh, the power can shift to, 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 to the north. It's not the end of Nigeria. You and I are still alive. I will be still alive. You can be a president of this country. I can equally be president of this country. So if there is no this power shift, there is no way you can have unity. That is why if you realize now in the South, almost all the constituencies, federal constituencies in the South, they have their own zoning system. If they pick a governor in this zone, they will pick a deputy governor in another zone. They will pick a senator in another zone. I hope you understand. Mm -hmm. So that things will be balanced. So doing justice to all manner of people is what is going to make your party strong and remain in power. There is a saying that power and authority can live in the hand of an infidel if he is fair and just. But it will never remain in the hand of a believer if he is unfair and unjust. Okay, sir. Now, for the sake of time, let, uh, as we round up, let's yes. look into the administration of your party. Yes. We have a lot of problems, starting from the insecurity down to the educational sector yes. and otherwise. So, if Nigerian does your party the honor yes. of becoming the president, yes. who is Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, yes. what do you think? your administration would have to, what do you think your administration would concentrate more on what do you think you would want to do better that wasn't well done at the last administration we are going to improve on the existing effort by the current administration that is the essence of continuity in the areas of education we know our loopholes and we know how to rectify that in the areas of security we know our loopholes and we know how to rectify that in the areas of employment and other uh, economic activities, we know how to improve that. Let me tell you, one of the problems of this country is revenue generation. Nigeria is blessed with a lot of mineral resources. But your ability to tap these mineral resources, convert them to what can be of assistance to people, you cannot do that. Here, we have somebody 
that have the knowledge anybody that manage the affairs of lagos and make lagos what lagos is today can manage the affairs of nigeria take it from me because if you go to lagos nobody can tell you that yes lagos is my own no if you go to lagos all tribes of nigeria are in lagos and they share almost the same rights as far as lagos is concerned Lagos used to be a crown colony even during the colonial era. Asiwajubola met Lagos without nothing. And he met Lagos what Lagos is today. Go and check the revenue generation base of Lagos. It's more than a lot of countries in, 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 in Africa. Countries in Africa. So we are going to continue from what all the foundation this government have established. If it is an infrastructure that is not completed, we are going to complete it and move forward. Okay, now, sir, 